what are some of the quick things that if anyone's thinking I'm feeling inflammation, what are some of the things in our physical, like things that we're consuming that are likely to cause inflammation? Yeah, so there's the physiological and the psychological yeah. again. So the physiological, let's go on that side. Yes. So the, the, we start with the foods that we eat. I mean, every food we eat either feeds inflammation or fights it. There's, there's no neutral food. There's no Switzerland meal. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's serving your physiology. It's doing something. Mm -hmm. Maybe in incremental ways, maybe in negligible ways, but it's some in very major ways. So we have to take inventory of every food we eat, other, every meal is another opportunity to bring inflammation up or bring inflammation levels down. So what I call the inflammatory core four are the four foods or food ingredients that are most likely to disrupt that gut microbiome, all the trillions of bacteria in our gut that, that regulate our inflammation levels, regulate hormones, regulate our brain and neurotransmitters. So that's going to be gluten-containing grains would be number one. And I have a nuanced conversation about this. There are better versions of gluten. You can get ancient grains, you can get sourdough bread that ferments some of this. A lot of the foods that I'm gonna be talking about here are what we've done to the food, not necessarily the food in and of itself, but for the sake of simplicity, gluten-containing grains, looking at that in your life. Number two would be industrial seed oils, things like soybean oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. Palm oil. Palm oil, exactly, yeah. I've just been taking off a lot of those because that was somewhere where we hadn't got to yet. So I'm off palm oil, canola oil. I can only eat things in olive oil or avocado oil at the moment. Love it. Yeah. Thanks, Mona. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks Mona. Yeah. <laughs> Conventional dairy, I would say that. And added sugar, which is no surprise, I'm sure, to people. But even the nice sounding euphemisms for sugar, you know, that, that are hidden very cleverly on labels, that they may be better for you options. And I'm not demonizing this entire sugar industry, but I'm saying, look at the amount of added grams of sugar you're consuming in a day. You may be surprised. So decreasing that, and if I could make the core four a plus one, <laughs> I would add alcohol to that list, is people oftentimes that eat cleaner they clean up that diet. They know about the inflammatory core four, but they keep in alcohol in their life as like, oh, that's my one vice. But they are kept back. Their guts are still struggling. Their mental health is still struggling. Their energy levels, their weight loss resistance still struggling. So I would at least look at alcohol as a role into these as well, because it's becoming quite normalized within the wellness world specifically. And at the end of the day, there's no healthy amount of alcohol. There are better for you options, certainly, and I have to be pragmatic, but it's uh, something that I would take into consideration. Yeah, no, that's great. I mean, that's so practical. And I think everyone who's listening to that, I think we've all heard about a friend, I'm gluten-free too, but I've heard about friends being gluten-free and this yeah. and that, and we often laugh about these things. Yeah. But it's, it's interesting to hear just how simple it can be, yeah. right? These are not huge changes. None of these changes are like hard to find necessarily. These things are becoming more and more common, at least at a grocery store. Yeah. And we can start making healthier choices in a yeah. simple way. 